fire coral. The taxonomy of fire coral will show you something that you might not expect. Like other corals, fire coral is in the kingdom Animalia and the phylum Nidaria. However, they differ in class. Whereas real corals fall into the class Anthozoa, fire coral is classified as Hydrozoa. The name fire coral is actually a misnomer, as they are really more closely related to jellyfish than to most common stony coral. Whoever discovered it should have called it a fire hydra, but I guess that name was already taken. Fire coral belongs to the order Cavitata and the class Milliporidae, meaning thousand holes. Fire coral can be found in shallower reefs with warmer water, such as the Caribbean Sea, or many areas off the eastern coast of the continents Asia and Oceania. Fire coral has three main types, categorized by shape. The first is branching. Branching fire coral resembles the branches of a tree, hence the name branching. Yeah. The next type is blade fire coral. This type has multiple big plates that extend out from their anchor point. The last type of fire coral is box type. These resemble the blade type to an extent, but look squigglier. However, the types are not as clear cut as they may seem, because fire coral will often insidiously grow over other corals, taking their shapes. The class name of fire coral, Milliporidae, refers to the thousands of pores on the surface of a colony of fire coral. Unlike real coral, which only has one type of pore, fire corals have three different types of pores, which serve different purposes. The three types are called gastrolopores, dactylopores, and ampullae. Gastrolopores contain the feeding polyps, which are in charge of eating. Dactylopores contain the stinging polyps, which are the colony's defense. Ampullae contain the reproductive cells. The structure of a fire coral is actually one big exoskeleton that is riddled with holes all through it, where the actual living parts are found. As fire coral is almost completely immobile, it attempts to feed on anything small that floats nearby. Fire coral actually relies heavily on a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship with a kind of algae called zooxanthellae. The algae provides nutrients, and in turn, the coral provides protection. Fire coral will mostly reproduce sexually, through spawning, but on some occasions, they will reproduce asexually by breaking off and taking root somewhere else. The most interesting thing about fire coral is their defense. If you look closely, they have many tiny hair-like tentacles that contain a defensive toxin. Upon contact, these tentacles will shoot into whatever touched them. This defensive mechanism does not affect small fish. If what touches the fire coral happens to be skin, the tentacles will then release the toxin inside of their assailant. Divers should always wear gloves near fire coral, as touching fire coral with bare skin will leave a rash that will show up in around 30 minutes and last a few days. These rashes can cause burning, swelling, and itching. The effects can last longer and be more severe, but for most people, these rashes won't cause any long-term damage. As a treatment, try swabbing the affected area with something saturated in vinegar, or submerging it in hot water. These feisty little knot corals are one of the most interesting things that live in coral reefs, in my opinion. But besides being interesting, they are important to read up on before going diving or snorkeling. They are an important part of warm water coral reef ecosystems, as they give protection to algae and small fish. Fire coral speaks to how much more there is going on in these ecosystems than you might think at first.